what's up y'all today uh well first off welcome to my very messy garage i uh, got a lot going on a lot of logs on the fire and um not necessarily in here just life in general and yeah i've been doing a lot of shipping and receiving and carrying on and parts and stuff i got a cool surprise under there i'm going to show you in a minute um, some of y'all have already seen this picture. Let's go ahead and just do this. Let's just take a gander at this beautiful work. This deserves to be in a Louvre. I mean, this is just, hold on, give me a second here. That's just outstanding work. Um, a buddy of mine, Mike, who is a fellow Buell enthusiast, has one of the most immaculate bikes you can Honestly, just an amazing looking bike. I'll send, a, I'll try and post a video of it right here just to link it if I can. I don't know if I can or not. I don't know. I think you have to have to like 40 million subscribers to be able to link to other people's videos. If not, I'll put it in the comments section. He only has like two or three videos for, of his bike, but it is outstanding. Anyway, um, so I'll quickly show you a picture of what the bike's headers looked like previously. And, I mean, look at the difference. Holy cow, man. There used to be a dent right here. It's gone, the scratches are gone. There's no, I'm, look, I'm getting my fingerprints all over it. I'll have to make sure I wipe this down really good with some uh, brake cleaner acetone or alcohol or something to get all the fingerprints off there. Cause I, I bet you if I did that and started the bike, I'd have a nice thumbprint right there on the header. So you guys, I don't know if you can hear my voice. <clears throat> I'm uh, I got really sick. Uh, kind of a 24 hour bug and I don't know was going to fully re, um, re, not rebuild. What's the word I'm looking for? So I think what we'll do, order of operations will be this. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get the primary on, and then we'll take a look at what's in the box over there. All right, first things first, um, Sorry for that. Uh, I went ahead and put the seal in for the shifter and uh, absolutely just buggered up right there. Luckily, that'll be behind the, the shifter dealio, so it won't be absolutely visible. And then I, bought, I went ahead and bought my new, uh, and installed my new um, primary tensioner guide thingy. I forget what that's called. It's in the it's in the uh, shop manual over there. What what the name of it is? I put some Teflon on there. I don't think I needed to, but I did it anyway, just just to avoid any um, potential leaks. It never leaked ever, but we're not gonna make any assumptions, right? Maybe I should have. Who knows what effect that's gonna have? So let me uh, review. Make sure I don't need to put the clutch. Um, uh, which we call it mechanism in there, clutch, clutch actuator, thinning bobber in there first. What? All right, so back to where we were. Sheesh, y'all, I gotta clean some crap up. This is. getting out of hand. All right, nothing looks weird. Okay, gonna go ahead and. Oh, 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 one more thing. I need to apply some um, grease on the shifter itself just to give it a, the seal a fighting chance. So we're not um, damaging that, that seal. It is pretty del delicate when new. So we're just gonna add a very thin light coat of grease here. Um, and to the seal here, just kind of give it a um, little s 
starter lubrication there for whenever things get going on the bike. Um, the seal's not just dying. All right. And you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit more. Oh, let me show you. So I had some questions about what the modification was. That's the mod right there. As you can see, the bushing now goes well uh, into the case. It used to just go about a half inch or less. Now it's like almost a full inch into the primary. And it just gives, there was a gap between this surface, which uh, is gonna be, you know, riding up against that part of the um, shifter shaft. Um, and so there was this gap in that bushing between the bushing and the aluminum. And so this extends it all the way. So you have one solid piece of um, metal there to support the entire shaft. And, you know, it's just going to, it is it is what it is. It's more support. So a few moments later. Improvement. Um, it's, not, it's not anything that you're going to, you know, going to be measurable at the dyno or anything like that. So this is the kind of stuff that I prefer. I used to really, when I was younger, I used to really love, you know, horsepower chasing and stuff like that. And I was a big nitrous guy back in the nineties. Um, and uh, not that I had anything wicked back then, but my friends did. And um, we all, kind of follow the mantra of more is more. And now, now I'm more like, you know, kind of over it. I don't really worry about it. Now this is a tight fit for anybody wondering. Very, very tight fit. So that's what, that's the intention here. That's why I'm kind of struggling to get this on. Oh, it might help. <laughs> the, prim the primary chain was in the way. It's like, wait a minute, this thing went on no problem. It was tight, yeah, but this is getting out of hand. So this is, uh, there we go, there we go. So now I'm gonna have to kind of finagle everything here and get it. Oh, it's a lot, it's a lot going on. Okay, all right, now I think what I need to do is pause, get the gasket back on there. It keeps popping off, um, but I think we're in the, Home stretch now. Yep, we are. And make sure I'm not gonna damage the gasket. Hey, it's looking like an engine again, you guys. This is going to do a um, preliminary um, primary chain adjustment it's not going to be dialed in because you know you really actually you want everything kind of on the bike so you can put it in gear move move the wheel kind of rotate things around because every chain well I take that back some chains have tight spots and there's just you know it's good practice to kind of move the, the wheel around double check your settings um, you want about a half inch of 
um, wiggle room in the primary chain. I think that's it. It's either three eighths inch or half inch, which is why I'm only going to do a rough adjustment. So, and then just just to keep this thing. Loose, little righty tidy, which hooks it up. And we've got a long way to go. And whoa, I did not have a long way to go. Ah. That might be a little bit too loose, but it's okay. It's not gonna get redone when I get it on the bike. Now what I gotta do is guys um, that's pretty much gonna be it for today's video I'm gonna leave um, the rest of these covers off I um, got uh, in the last part of the video there I actually ended up pushing out that seal right there and so um, in the time lapse you're gonna see me kind of gently massaging it back into place and it went back in place I'll have to obviously watch that um, you know, that's, that's how it goes sometimes, but let me know what you think of the wrinkle finish. It is a VHT um, black wrinkle finish. Nothing special. You can buy it at any parts store or online. And uh, if you're interested in it, um, I recommend VHT. They make good products. That said, um, we're going to go ahead and wrap the video up right here. And, uh, oh, no, 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 no. See, you guys almost let me forget. See, I don't follow scripts, so I have to rely on my memory. Maybe that's bad practice, but let's talk about what we got in the box here. So these are my heads. They've been redone, uh, fully remanufactured, if you will, rebuilt and machined. So let me, uh, let me get these out of the box. All right, let's talk about these heads. So you may remember in one of the previous videos, I had talked about going to um, Hammer Performance uh, to get my heads re redone. And uh, a friend of mine strongly recommended uh, giving XLXB horsepower a shot. And uh, Chad over there is a good guy. And I wanna put a plug in for him. Uh, he did excellent work. He was very sensitive to um, the tight budget I had on this build and what needed to happen and uh, took care of me. He even put the old parts back in the box for me for reference in case I wanted to verify his claims. Um, so let's talk about what happened. All right, so the heads were going to be, the intention was to get them fully rebuilt, etc. New springs, new keepers, etc new valves. And so, um, what, what we did was, um, obviously it's been resurfaced, remachined, cleaned up. You can see the ports are very clean. Hopefully you can see that. Very clean ports, um, on the head. Let's get it. What do you think of that? That's pretty outstanding, right? Very good work. So got some new valves and, um, new seals, and he talked about, if you guys remember, I thought I was getting a lot of blow-by, and I was, and you remember the deposits that I had on the tops of my pistons and inside the uh, um, combustion chambers and inside the uh, the intake runners and exhaust runners. So um, the guides were extremely worn on these heads, and it was allowing the oil 
to flow past that. In addition to that, the earlier model Buell heads had um, uh, a defective valve stem seal on them and they get brittle and hard from the heat and cease doing their job, that being to keep the oil from running down inside the valve guide and right on top of the valve and into the combustion chamber, et cetera. So um, that he said, hey, I watch, he watched, he's actually been watching our videos. So Chad, if you're watching this, um, thanks for everything. The heads look great. Um, but the, uh, he, he mentioned that that was, he saw the video where I had all the uh, buildup and said, hey, that's your problem. Um, that's what's going on. And so, yeah, maybe that's normal for this particular age engine or this um, particular um, series of the Buell engines, but should not be the case going forward. Of course, there's going to be carbon buildup inside the combustion chambers once uh, this these are installed and the engine's running again, but it won't be to the extent that, should not be to the extent that we saw when I pulled the engine apart the first time. The other thing he had to do was to um, put a an insert here in the exhaust. This is the front cylinder head, the exhaust valve. Um, that had a helicoil installed by yours truly. It did not go so hot, actually went in crooked. Um, and I said, heck with it, because I was doing it while the heads were on the bike. And uh, yeah, it didn't work out. It sealed, it lasted for two years, but that was, it bothered me. So I wanted it fixed properly. And uh, Chad, again, came to the rescue. Um, flow numbers actually improved because of the uh, improved design of these valves and the profile of the valve itself. Nothing special, no porting done to the heads, nothing, just better valves. And so the numbers went up enough that um, I should see, I should feel the difference in the, in the way the engine runs. Of course, it's been so long now, I won't be able to, I might be able to feel the difference. But um, the bike will feel um, significantly better. Um, so most likely more responsive and, and um, a number of other things. So again, Chad, thank you. You did a great job. I appreciate uh, your efforts in helping me out on the bike and uh, the heads are great. Again, can't thank you enough. And look, man, he gives these personalized notes, you know? Oh, you can't see that, sorry. Look at that. Said, hey, max lift, 580. And thank you, and then, I think he's got another note over here maybe. He had to serve it uh, a, oh, what is that? Is that a three? Three thousandths. I think it's either eight or three thousandths had to come off the head. So anyways, um, so there you go. There's my heads. And hopefully in the next video, they'll be on the engine to the right here. Anyways, all right, guys, I'm done. So appreciate your time. Um, thanks for tuning in. And uh, until next time, peace out and keep it between the ditches.